So let's begin our discussion on ethers. So what exactly is an ether compound? An ether is a molecule or a compound that has the following molecular formula. A central oxygen attached to two different or the same R groups. Let's call them R1 and R2. Notice that the oxygen also has two pairs of lone electrons. And we'll see why that's important in a few minutes. First, let's discuss the nomenclature system for our ethers. So whenever we have ether compounds, how do we name those ether compounds? Well, the groups joined by the oxygen, R1, R2, are named alphabetically followed by the word ether. So for example, let's look at the three compounds. Compound one is the following molecule. It has a central oxygen that has two of the same R groups, two methyl groups. So we name it dimethyl ether. Well, ether simply means that we have a central oxygen attached to two of the same methyl groups, hence dimethyl ether. So let's look at the second uh, ether. Here we have a central oxygen attached to two different R groups. We have a methyl and an ethyl. Since ethyl comes before methyl, since E comes before M in the alphabet, we name it ethyl methyl ether. Now, let's look at the final compound. Now we have, once again, two different R groups attached to our central oxygen. So, we have the term butyl and methyl. Since B comes before M in the alphabet, we name it term butyl methyl ether. So, let's look at the second bullet point. Intermolecular properties, intermolecular forces. Recall that intermolecular bonds are simply bonds between different adjacent molecules or compounds. So let's suppose I take my ether and I add water to my ether mixture. What are the different types of bonds that exist between the two different types of molecules? Well notice that ether does not have a polar OH bond and that means it cannot donate H molecules. So it itself cannot hydrogen bond. But if a second molecule, like a water molecule, is present in close proximity, that water molecule can donate an H atom because this has an electronegative oxygen with a partial negative charge. So, let's suppose we take this molecule, dimethyl ether, and mix it with our water molecule. We get the following reaction, or bonding. So this partially negative oxygen on the ether will bond with the partial positive H atom on the oxygen, on the water. And likewise, this partially positive H atom will bond with the partially negative charged oxygen. And so we will have the following dipole-dipole interaction. So now let's discuss the structure of our ethers. So if we look at atomic orbital picture, we get the following depiction. Our oxygen is bonding to two different R groups or to the same R groups. And the angle between the R groups, the ROR angle, is 112 degrees. And notice that both of these non-bonding orbitals have a pair of electrons. So once again, the ROR bond is 112 degrees. And every bond, including these, two as these two non-bonding atomic orbitals are sp3 hybridized so our oxygen is sp3 hybridized just like it is in alcohol and in water now let's discuss the acid and base properties so earlier i said that this molecule ethers don't have a polar oh bond and that means it cannot donate an h atom since ethers lack a polar OH hydroxy group, they are not acids. However, earlier I said we have two pairs of electrons. So that means that they are able to act as Bronsted and Lewis bases. So, however, they contain an oxygen with a lone pair of electrons. In fact, with two pairs of lone pairs of electrons and so they can act as bases. So here's the general formula. Let's suppose we have some hypothetical acid, HB, reacts with our ether. This lone pair of electrons can take this H atom away from this guy, forming a conjugate base and a conjugate acid. 
Now the approximate pKa of this conjugate acid is negative 3.6 and that means it's a relatively strong acid. So this is a relatively weak base. So even though they can act as bases, they're relatively weak. Now, the last point I want to talk about ethers is the following. Ethers are normally used as solvents. Now they're very good solvents. Why? Well, because they can stabilize our product. For example, when we're trying to develop organometallic molecules, the organometallic molecules are stabilized by ethers because ethers have this uh, partially negative oxygen bond or oxygen molecule. So if we look at the following picture, here's our organometallic molecule and it's stabilized because a lone pair of electrons can bond with this magnesium metal atom. 